And we have one more presentation from uh, Curtin University presented by Andrew Woods. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Margaret. So we'll try and make this quick. Um, so this is um, a project that was uh, uh, proposed by myself and my colleague at the, uh, the Hive at Curtin University and undertaken by a group of students um, in the computer science and software engineering um, area at Curtin University. So those of you who have been following along the, uh, uh, the presentations here over a few years will know that I manage um, a facility at Curtin called the Hub for Immersive Visualisation and E-Research. We, we prefer to call it the Hive. Um, and uh, um, at the Hive um, is a range of different displays, but the one that's uh, of most importance to this presentation is a display we call the cylinder. And the purpose of, sorry, and the cylinder is an eight metre diameter, three metre high, 180 degree field of view display. Um, there are three ceiling mounted projectors uh, filling the screen and it also can run in stereoscopic 3D using frame sequential 3D and shutter glasses. However, the challenge with this display is that it's a curved screen, wide angled lenses, uh, the projectors are projecting from an ele elevated project projection angle, which distorts the display geometry. Um, the projection surface is also a stretched polymer surface which, which bows in the centre. Um, the bow is not accounted for by, by current software solutions, which results in distortion of horizontal and vertical lines. Um, so you can see here a laser scan of the screen. You can see the, uh, the bowing of the, uh, of the screen here. So this is a side view of the screen, laser scan, and uh, the, the, the bowing is, is evident just, just there. And that happens across, across most of the display. So, um, the project um, involving seven students was to use a camera, digital steel camera, and an automated processing to calculate a custom calibration to account for and correct the distorted geometry, uh, distorted image geometry. Um, also allow us to move the ideal viewing position to different points in front of the display so that at that, those points the, the geometry would be correct load and save different calibrations, and also be extensible to different, uh, different geometry displays, other types of uh, uh, projective displays. Um, well, what's going on here? Different font, I guess. Modules that bring the software together. So uh, it's broken down into uh, five different um, uh, uh, modules. There's the image generator, camera to computer interface, image processing, geometry computation, and warm blend output. And I'll go through those step by step now. So the image generator stage generates a range of test images, and those are sent to the projector or projectors and displayed on screen um, so that they be, can be captured uh, by, the, uh, by the camera. So here's the, the test pattern, and that's sent to one of the projectors, and you can see it all comes out really quite bowed and, and uh, distorted. Um, uh, because it's all of those distortions I made before. So here's a series of images, and these represent the different test images which are sent to the, uh, the three projectors. So the first one is to just send white to all of the different displays, all the different projectors, and that en ends up with uh, the whole screen being illuminated. You can also see the overlap between the three projectors. Then each of the th three projectors is uh, addressed individually, and then we send a series of individual test patterns uh, to each of the three displays. This particular one is primarily aimed at uh, determining the extent and the centre pixel of each projector. Then we send a, a series of finer resolution um, uh, grids to each of the projectors. And then the next phase is to capture each of those with a camera. Um, we're using a, a Canon 1200D, um, and that's remotely controlled and displayed in a live view on the, uh, the GUI of the software. Uh, then the image processor loads each of those captured images, notifies the user if it can't see the full screen, uh, everything's completely in frame. Uh, feature detection of test image control points allows the user to visualize detected features just to confirm everything's working and allow for manual adjustment of the screen dimensions. 
And here's the processed um, images. And in the corners or other particular features, you'll see um, dots which represent the, uh, the software automatically detecting particular features on the display. Oops, sorry, let me... One, two, three, and four over here. Uh, so here's uh, one, two, three, four, and so on throughout the, uh, the different test patterns. Now, the important... Uh, the, the gridded test patterns show up a little bit differently. Now it's got the corners showing in blue and each of the um, centre points, either right in the middle of the screen or the centre of a particular uh, side, are shown in red. One, two, three. And then the finer uh, grid is uh, processed as well. One, two, and three. Um, the next seat... Uh, the next sequence is to, uh, for geometry computation, uh, which uses the control points and the detected features from the image processor stage to calculate and generate the warp mesh for the screen. Um, and this is achieved through the use of projective geometry and the concept of a uh, pinhole camera model. Um, warp and blend output is the stage where we calculate what we should be sending to the, uh, the warp blend units, which um, pre-distort the images before they're sent to the projectors. Some projectors have the warp blend unit built into the projector and sometimes it's an external device. Um, so this module had to interface with the warp blend hardware, avoid op overriding the current calibration without saving it beforehand, um, saving the new calibration, apply and load and revert to any other calibration. And ultimately, our aim is to have this kind of result. So completely um, uh, rectilinear geometry right across the display and uh, that'll never be perfect for every viewing point in front of the display but the aim is that say for example if you've got a large audience you'd probably put that point in the middle of the audience so that uh, uh, minimize the distortion across the, the population. The distortion is fairly small um, but nevertheless you, you do want to optimize that. So in conclusion um, it's been a great learning experience for the students and also the, the Josh and myself as, as being the, the supervisors of the project. The project is in its final integration stages. Uh, the first three stages are working well as you can see from those images just there. And uh, the results of the final two stages are expected within days. So uh, it's all happening right at the, right at the moment and uh, um, we're looking forward to uh, um, seeing the results very soon.